Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is April 15th and this is my shop update. I hope everyone is having a good week and uh, staying safe and staying healthy. So what's going on in the shop this week is kind of a kind of a funny thing. So I just finished up a shop organization project, the router bit cabinet. I had the shop all nice and like one more thing organized and then I decided you know be a good idea. I should uh, continue with my Bridgeport cleanup and tear it apart and scatter its parts literally everywhere in the shop. So my shop went from being somewhat more organized to being way, way more disorganized. <laughs> so we're gonna take a look at the, uh, the rubber bit cabinet, I'll show you how that's looking, talk a little bit about the Bridgeport cleanup and where that's at, and then I'm also gonna talk a little bit about metal cutting circular saws since uh, I got a lot of questions every single time I use that thing. So let's, uh, let's jump into it. Let's check out this cool cabinet thing hanging on the wall. So this was a uh, pretty fun little project. There's not like a whole lot to it. It's just a very simple display case. And I have uh, a couple little things left to do. So I just got the, what is this? Poxy glass, acrylic sheet, whatever. Just got that in yesterday. Got it cut and I have to make the uh, retaining strips for the back of the door. But uh, otherwise this thing's got a little door on it and it'll have a knot and whatever, but yeah, you know, something, something like that. <laughs> so a little uh, hinged door display cabinet with a fixed shelf and you can put whatever you want in there. So this project will be out probably in a week or two and there'll be a set of plans for it as well if you want to make a display case for whatever. <laughs> in my case, uh, router bits, but in your case, it could be literally anything that fits inside of here. So the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the shop's looking a little bit nicer. I finally have all the bits in one place, which is incredibly nice. Like the biggest problem with not having like places for bits is they end up somewhere and then you can't find them. So this would be a lot nicer for actually having a place to put things back when they're done and uh, just knowing where things are. So yeah, nice fun little wood project, which was uh, fun. <laughs> How about this thing? So with the whole quarantine thing, I've had to sort of uh, move things around as far as projects go and come up with things I can do, you know, without leaving the home. And getting back to cleaning up the Bridgeport is uh, one of those things that uh, came to mind. So this week I got back into the cleaning process. You can see the table and the saddle is off of here. The power feeds are off and uh, I'm digging into all of that stuff. I can tell you this cleanup process is uh, definitely getting away from me. It was originally just supposed to be this like clean it up, make it nice so you can touch it without you know getting yourself all dirty. Uh, this is starting to turn into a restoration project because I'm already doing it and I might as well. This is what the things that I hate about like one thing I hate about taking stuff apart and like cleaning it and working on it is you start seeing all the things that oh I could fix this or I could improve that or I could swap this part or whatever and that is definitely happening. So originally I was only planning on taking it this far. Uh, just getting a degrease and getting it put back together. But now I'm thinking, you know, I have it apart this far. The inside of the knee is really dirty. I kind of want to clean that a little better. So I kind of want to pull this knee off of here. So now I'm thinking, okay, I'll pull the knee off. And while I have that off, well, I have it basically taken apart. So maybe I will paint it now. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's progressing that way. But one of the things I did notice is I sort of answered a question I had in the back of my mind was this thing came with only a y-axis power, um, not power feed, uh, DRO. So I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. I wonder why they only had a DRO for one axis. Well, whatever this thing was being used for before was really excessively used in like only the y-axis. So I pulled the y-axis lead screw out. You can literally see the wear on the threads. The wear here on the ways of the knee for the y-axis isn't terrible. That's what you can see when you buy it but the wear on the underside of the saddle, which rides up against here, is heavily worn. So this thing was used only for moving stuff this way. The x-axis is in still pretty decent shape, um, but it's just kind of interesting. You don't know these things until you pull it apart, but I don't know. It's coming. It's just this stuff literally everywhere. <laughs> so over here on the, uh, the assembly table, it has become more part storage and a little bit of a tinkering area. So the boards on the power feeds definitely had some overcurrent happening. So 
but I was tinkering with those a little bit, see if maybe I can figure out what components have been uh, fried and replace them. Otherwise, I'll just buy new boards for them, but it's just kind of fun to, to tinker and play, but uh, these are cleaned up and put back on, and this is the saddle from the, the mill, and uh, everything on this thing is stupid heavy. <laughs> so that's the, uh, the saddle. It's nice. It's cute. So I'll have a video about uh, getting to at least this part coming out soon as well, so look for that. This should be a fun little ongoing project. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've been up to the uh, last couple of weeks. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is a guitar by Bob. This was made from reclaimed mahogany from an old bookcase and the spruce top from fencing panels. The neck is flame maple. Next is a solid maple desk by Matt. It features seating for two, a solid pane of glass on top, lots of storage, brass hardware with inlaid rosewood, and no plywood. Next is the kennel by Hunter. This is a double dog kennel that Hunter built for a friend a few months ago. He used rough sawn naughty alder and has cleaned it up a bit to give it a rustic look. It's joined with biscuits and the steel dowels are embedded in the rails of the frame throughout. Last this week is a display cabinet by Joshua. Joshua made this cabinet for his wife who wanted somewhere to display smaller knickknacks in some painting Joshua has done. The case is made of African mahogany and the dividers are ambrosia maple. It's finished with several coats of shellac and topped with furniture wax. This was Joshua's first time doing hand cut dovetails as well as stopped dados and his wife was happy with the results. Alright, so cutting steel and metal with a circular saw. This is my metal cutting circular saw. Let's talk a little bit about why this is specifically made for cutting metal or steel or whatever. So in the case of this guy, there's like two features that make it able to be able to cut steel or other metals. One of them, of course, is going to be the blade, and the other one is the saw itself. This is a low RPM saw. So a typical, you know, seven and a quarter inch circular saw is going to run, you know, five, five and a half thousand RPM. This one spins at 3,900 RPMs, so it's a little bit of a slower spin. Now there are several companies that sell a metal cutting circular saw just like this one, and you can also get them in the chop saw variety, so a 14 inch chop saw or some kind of handheld circular saw type option. I bought this guy, uh, what, four, four years ago? Whenever I was doing my first log arch, I was trying to cut the flat bar from the gussets. I started cutting that with a cutoff wheel, which took ages and like a couple of wheels. I originally bought this saw because it was like the cheapest saw on the market for this purpose. I think I paid $90, $95 for it. And for someone who's not doing a whole lot of metal fabrication and work like that, as long as I can make some cuts in a much faster pace and a much more pleasant way, that was good enough for me. So this thing in particular has been uh, quite nice to have around. It makes for making some of these cuts uh, really convenient. As far as blade life goes, this is the third blade I've had on here. This is just the standard, I guess, stock replacement blade that you can get for this particular saw. Uh, they cost somewhere around $20 a piece. Um, the thicker the material you cut, the lower the blade life is going to be. So it's like technically rated to only cut a quarter inch thick steel, but I've cut up to three quarters of an inch thick with it and it has worked out just fine. The blades are, for the most part, they're going to be uh, completely consumable and completely disposable because what happens with them is the teeth don't get dull, it actually loses the teeth itself. So eventually you get to a point where you're cutting, you're like, this thing isn't going anywhere. Take a look at the blade. Now there's no carbide left at all. So of course you're not going to be cutting anything. <laughs> but the uh, blades being as cheap as they are, that hasn't been a huge problem for me. So for 90 bucks, I think this was a really good value for me. Uh, the only kind of downside to this in particular is that it's not all that rugged, so you can't throw it around that much, which I enjoy doing. So I've lost the adjustment for the depth on here which I've replaced with just a bolt and a nut, which isn't super convenient, but uh, I don't need to change depth super often. And uh, yeah, just don't toss it around too much. Unfortunately, I guess this one has been discontinued by Evolution. Their new saw, which replaced this one, is a little nicer looking. It's also $150, so it's a little bit more uh, of a higher price, I guess. But there are several manufacturers that make these things, uh, so you can pick and choose your favorite color. and. Uh, do that I guess. So that's a bit about the metal cutting circular saw. I'm actually thinking about replacing this one in particular with a cordless one 
just so it's a little more convenient to use out in the uh, the driveway. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's nice. Makes things a little more efficient and streamlined when it comes to cutting things that are steel or metal and not wood. <laughs> so I think that's about it for me. I hope you stay healthy, stay safe, and hopefully stay sane. Because uh, at least for me, I'm going a little stir crazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's about it for me this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I tackled today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, <laughs> happy working. <laughs>